Hey everybody, I wanted to take today's blog to, to speak a little bit off the cuff just about the, the recent Orlando shooting and I've been trying to think about what I could share that might be useful um, with some of the questions and conversations that might come up between you and other people because I think a lot of people are wondering now, um, okay, so Islam teaches that um, homosexuality is a sin. Doesn't Christianity teach that as well? And is Christianity therefore as hateful and dangerous as Orthodox Islam? And so I, I thought I'd try to speak to that a little bit and, and maybe share some things that you might already know, um, but maybe you've forgotten or, or maybe you're going to hear for the first time. And my prayer is that this is helpful and useful to you. And so the first thing I want to just share is, um, despite what you may hear in the media, the Islamic terrorist was acting in accordance with Orthodox Islam when he shot people because they were gay. That's what's taught uh, verbatim in the Hadith, which is the second most sacred text in Islam. And he was simply doing what it says. And though there may be people who say, well, that's not what Islam really is. The reality is that um, they're not familiar with what the sacred writings of their own book teaches. And in Islam, when, when the canon closed on the sacred Islamic scriptures, that's how they finished. There was no revision later on. Um, if you're gay, you're to be stoned to death or murdered. Um, that's the way it is. End of story. Christianity is very, 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 very different. And so the first thing I want to be upfront about is that, yeah, the, the Old Testament and the Bible in the New Testament teaches that any type of sexual activity outside of God's design for marriage, which is one man and one woman, any type of sexual activity outside of that is sin, be it uh, pornography, sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, cohabitation and having a sexual relationship, premarital sex, anything outside of God's plan for marriage, which is one man and one woman, is sexual immorality is what the Bible calls it. Um, and so here's what happens. In the Old Testament of the Bible, you get the law of God, uh, most perfectly summed up in the Ten Commandments. You know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, you'll honor your mother and father. All of these classic ones that we're, some of us are even familiar with in a cultural sense. And here's what the Apostle Paul said about the law. The Apostle Paul, who lived after uh, Jesus ascended back to heaven, he was alive during the life of Jesus, but continued to live after Jesus returned to heaven at the end of his earthly ministry. The Apostle Paul said the purpose of the whole law was to serve as a tutor for us, a teacher, an instructor, to show us one thing, that every single one of us is guilty and deserving of death under the law. So you have God who is perfect in every way. And one of the ways that God reveals what that means is he says, to help you understand how perfect I am, how different I am from you, um, here's everything you would need to do. Here's everything you would need to never do in order to live up to my standards of perfection. And that includes the sexual arena. But here's the thing. When you get into the Ten Commandments, you can go through it. And you very quickly find that you have broken every single one of the Ten Commandments, and so have I. And I know you might be thinking, well, well, I've never murdered anybody. But many of you know, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus shows up on the earth and he begins to say, no, no, it's not only about uh, what you do on the outside, but the Lord's looking at your heart. He's looking at your mind. And so you might say, I've never murdered a person, but if you've ever wanted to, in fact, if you've ever even had the thought of hate toward another person, that is the seed which is the start of the process that results in murder. Hating a person is the first step toward murder. And even though it's only the first step, it's as bad as murder in the eyes of God. That's, that's how perfect God is. That's how without flaw he is. If you've hated someone for a moment, it's as bad as murder. If you've ever looked at a person with lust in your mind, that's as bad as having committed adultery with them. That's what the Bible says. And so here's the thing. Me, you... Everyone who's ever lived outside of Jesus Christ, we stand together under the Old Testament law as guilty of sin. Every single one of us deserving of death, according to the Old Testament law. Every single one of us. And this is where Christianity is a radical departure from Islam. Because in Islam, that's sort of where the story would end. But that's not where the story ends with Christianity. You see, in Christianity, God loves every person. He made every person. He is in anguish over the thought of people not having a relationship with him, not spending eternity with him. And so in Christianity, God does the most unbelievable thing. 
God, Jesus, becomes man in the flesh and he takes the literal and spiritual punishment that should have been going to you and I. He takes that punishment upon himself and he dies in our place. It's the most amazing thing in the world. So while the response of some religions to sin is to say, kill them all, chop off their arms, the response of God to sin is to say, I'm going to die for it. I'm going to die in your place. I'm going to take the punishment for you. There's no one like Jesus. There's no other belief system like that. And now we live in the time period after the death and resurrection of Jesus. He's alive again, and this is what he's told us. He said we're to be known by our love. He said we're not to judge those outside the church. That's God's business. We're to judge those inside the church and make sure that we who call ourselves Christians are living up to that title, carrying the name of Christ. The Bible even says that, that we're not supposed to kill even those who are trying to kill us. We're not supposed to kill our enemies. We're supposed to pray for our enemies, pray that God would bless them. We're supposed to do good to those who are trying to do evil to us. That's what Christianity is. It's so radically different. And so when something like Orlando happens, here's what I would say. The sexual orientation of the people involved is irrelevant because the value of every person is their spirit, the part of them, the soul that's going to live forever. Jesus died for that soul. Jesus crafted and knit that soul together when it was in the womb. Jesus made that soul in his own image, gave that person characteristics like the ability to appreciate beauty that, that, that nothing else, nobody else has other than people. So to God, every person's incredibly precious. How precious? Well, he died for them. He bled for them. He was broken for every single person. And so we put an impossibly high value on the life of every person because Jesus has placed an impossibly high value on the life of every single person. And so we grieve over the loss of life in Orlando. And we grieve over the loss of life when it happens in Africa, when it happens in China. However it happens, it, it is a sad and tragic thing when life is lost because what's lost is not just a person who had hobbies and interests or a sexual preference or a gender identification. What's lost is that person's spirit from the earth. And that's a big, big, big deal. And so we grieve uh, along with those who mourn the, the tragic events uh, that happened in Orlando. And we view every single person who doesn't believe in Jesus as a potential brother or sister in Christ. Uh, we love, we pray, we wish good, we wish blessing on every single person. And that's what makes Christianity so different. So, so different. So we can disagree about what right and wrong is. But, man, Christians are called to love. We're called to love and to pray and to show kindness because that's what Jesus did to us uh, while we were still sinners, while we were guilty. And you know what Christians do is every Sunday and at small groups throughout the week, the reason we get together for church is to celebrate the fact that we were guilty. We deserve death. And we're just overwhelmed by the fact that Jesus loved us enough to forgive us. But we never forget that he has forgiven us and that we were as guilty as anybody else. Um, and that's something that we can't get over. And that's just why we love Jesus so much. It's why we love him so much. I hope this has blessed you. I hope it's been helpful in just understanding how Christians view this issue and how we're supposed to respond to it. Uh, God bless you guys.